here, bruh. A list of them. That's like the abstract. So yeah, Diamond Tree or Front Door, for sure, you know, both. <laughs> Anytime I'm presented with like a decision and they're hard to make because most decisions that you need to make in life, they've all, decisions have already been made. It's just that you won't make change, right? So and when you get to a point where you got to make the change, that's generally where the decision is made. So, but if there's something that's ever like, they're like 50-50, I always do both. It just, it saves the, the whole meltdown that happens in the mind. Okay, so someone says that they've gotten some negative energies, and since they've drank an ayahuasca, and I was told it's because ayahuasca breaks your energy field down, and have been suffering daily since since, and what, uh, and it's kind of at my wit's end, and I can actually assist you with that, brother. Good question, though, or, or good comment. Uh, one thing you should, well, a few things you should know. First of all, now, there's been a whole craze on drinking the tea and drinking the diamond tree and, or smoking diamond tree or whatever. And that, that same craze existed with LSD and, and many other substances. So I'm definitely not here to say that a person should not have an experience uh, or should have an experience. It's really something that generally calibrates itself for the person. But if you stand at the door and knock, meaning that if you keep beating down the door, like, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, then sometimes you can throw things out of sync because it's more like, you're making, you want to make it happen. Okay. So let me just explain that to you. There's like a, a synchronicity as we call it. So in, with certain substances, they're really tied into synchronicity. Ayahuasca is, DMT definitely is. These are synchronistic kind of substances because they move in a different space of time. So generally you're like telling yourself to do it from the future. But some people prematurely interrupt that process, as I called it, interrupting the process of the observer because they want to do something so bad that they keep forcing it to happen. And then they break the link of time because that's a part of our power because we can basically start to visualize whatever we want, like the law of attraction, whatever. And we, if we do that strong enough and we cr get enough resonators around us, we can actually make that happen before maybe it would even, it, it's even supposed to happen. So when you're dealing with substances that are time machines like DMT and ayahuasca, that can happen at any point or more often sometimes than not if one is approaching the medicine, not only, let's say, the wrong way, but possibly through others that have the wrong idea of what the medicine is about. And this leads to just the all-time statement, you may not want to sit and drink with everyone. And this is because, yes, when you do open your consciousness, you know, you basically unpack, and you're unpacked in the astral right there in front of everybody else that's also unpacked. So sometimes when packing up begins to happen, you're coming back down and, you know, going back in through the layers and the shells and forming yourself back together, etc., that other stuff gets stuck into your mesh work, okay? And then you come back feeling like you have uh, something else going on. I won't say it's a negative thing. I won't say it was a positive thing. So I can get you right to the solutions. The solutions are really being proactive about, first of all, learning who the elders are in many of the, the cleansing processes like Sage, Palo Santo, Sananga, like all those elements are there for you. Yes, that's why they, you know, a lot of these don't have a tendency to cause, let's say, psychoactive effects because it's not all about the psychoactive effect. It's also about the entire environment that's built around that psychoactive effect. And so, again, when now with the recovery process, if you have other energy that's actually inside of your field, you now need to basically start, I call it corner to corner. It's like what you do with your house is you take some sage, take your Palo Santo, you get the smoke going, and you start corner to corner, basically moving the energy out of the space. Then what you do is you don't allow people to come into the space, this is your house or whatever, with their shoes on. Because this is very, uh, a very easy way for the energy to get back into the space because it's all resonance. The energy feels like that it's beginning to resonant, resonate and it's just like a magnet. It just wants to go back to where it resonates. So how you remove that kind of resonance is that you just change the field to let's say the guardians that are responsible for sorting things out. And it's as simple as that. And then you claim it and it's done because 
Also, when there's spell work that's done in circles, the most destructive part of spell work is the person's belief in the spell. So in every tense, you want to go through your clearing process. You want to also take the body and take it through a process like magnesium salt, magnesium bath, Himalayan salt bath, something that's going to allow the charge because entities are basically charged, whether it's one, one electron missing from the field, etc. but they're charged. So what happens is, is that the, the charge goes into the salt and then anything that is not a core part of the structure in which you call you will basically cling to that and then go down the drain. So hopefully that's a, a good starter for getting the energy clear and word to the wise. Don't sit with everybody, you know, like there's some, some places that, you know, they, it's just too many people. You opened up a hundred people around you. Some folks just trying it. They've been on all sorts of substances and, you know, maybe you're at a singing festival or, you know, something It's just lots of people around, you know, it's not a good, sometimes not a good look to just unpack, take your clothes off in front of, or take your skin suit off in front of everything. So, um, the next question here is, and we're going to be wrapping it up. Uh, the question is, do I have to deal with cryptocurrency taxes where I'm located? There is probably, uh, like, in, or I could just say it like this, in many places, the tax laws are not even in place yet, and you can be really anywhere. If you know somebody there, then they could be the ones there for you. So just so you understand, not every country has the same laws. A lot of company, countries are scrambling to get laws in place. So in Costa Rica, I'm not sure. I don't. I, I got to actually go and talk to somebody about that, but I'm not sure exactly what their regulations are here. But I do know that in many places, there's really uh, no regulations yet. What book have I gifted the most to other people? I would say Day of the Fish by Shannon Dory, only because it's great at times to have some kind of foundation when it comes to studying metaphysical or spiritual and occult materials, because, yeah, it could get a bit fanciful. So I like to really go to the ancestral side of things to see how the, the geometry connects to the story. So, you know, if you understand Adinkras and uh, you understand some of the symbols behind many of the stars, like, you know, even previous stars, then you can find those symbols in other places, even within organisms. And it gives you more of a realization of what's happening here from an organic side. Because if you're looking at this from like a literary knowledge side, it doesn't answer all of what you need to know. And you get very rapidly buried into some kind of dogmatic tradition or some kind of corruption of the higher knowledge. So I like uh, The Day of the Fish because it goes back through one of the deepest mysteries that have already been documented and really put in stone. And it matches so correctly with what you see in humanity especially from a genetic level like where there's a genetic de degradation and there's and then where there's a plight to repair that genetic de degradation so meaning that there is was an event that caused there to be a constant degradation of the dna this would be like l steps of a ladder being missing so you could be trying to get to this other phase and the entire ring is missing and this is why like through activation, sometimes you feel like there's like a car starting up and then once it gets started, it can seem to keep running. And then at a certain point, it just kind of cuts off. And so that's because there's like links in the string that's missing and you can repair those links when you easily see a mirror of those links. And that's what higher consciousness does is it allows you to be able to see yourself in a state of perfection, right? Because I'm, I'm just using English to try to explain something that doesn't have a language associated with it. So, uh, so in a nutshell, yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's how that works. It's, um, let me see one quick second here. 